Hmm, it's on, but it's like nothing's happening. By the time we're done here, we will implement the commands needed to assign an IP address to a Cisco router and enable the interface. Cisco routers are not like Cisco switches, which are completely functional when you pull them out of the box. You take it, plug in the power, connect all your Ethernet interfaces, and a switch will do what a switch will do. That is, learn the MAC address on each one of those ports and switch traffic between them. A router, on the other hand, is literally a dead paperweight until you enable the interfaces and start your configuration. This provides a summary of what you need to do to accomplish that, and it all starts with my favorite command of all, show IP interface brief. All right, so let's plop down right here. I've got my console cable plugged into this Cisco router, and I'm going to flip over the configuration. Hit the enter key a couple times, and there it is, show IP interface brief. This is an out-of-the-box state of a Cisco device. You can see, I should say a Cisco router particularly, you can see every single one of these interfaces shows the interface number. It shows the IP address is currently unassigned because we haven't done anything. The big one is the status. This will be one of three options. One is down. That means it's literally not connected. So for instance, if I, if I unplugged a cable and the interface was actually active and working, it would say, oh, I've, I've lost connection. My status has gone to down. You can see right above that is administratively down. That means it's down, but it's not so much because the cable is disconnected. It's because I, as an administrator, shut it down, or I didn't turn it on, or, or I'm waiting to configure this device. The reason that's handy is because a lot of times, especially when it comes to routers, you don't want to introduce a router on a network without first having it configured the right way. There's so many network outages that have been caused because people don't know that when they take a router, it might be a DHCP server that hands out IP addresses and they plug it into a network and they cause a bunch of the devices to fail on the network because they think that's the router to the internet and it causes all of their traffic to essentially go into a black hole. So this option right here, the status, uh, gives us that property. Of course, the third one is up, right? You can have it administratively down, down, or up. Now, the other thing that, that is confusing about this is what's the difference between the status and the protocol? Well, that's really the difference between layer one and layer two of the OSI model. The status is layer one, the physical layer. Are we physically connected? Are we physically working and functional? This, the protocol is layer two, the data link layer. Are we actually communicating on that cable? Am I hearing signals that I understand and can interpret, or is this completely foreign to me? The best practice on one of these devices is to ensure that you have the IP address configured and then turn on the interface. You want to get as much of the configuration done before you actually enable it because otherwise you can cause the interface to go up and down and up and down. So let's do that. I'm going to come over here to the router, go into global configuration mode. That's configure terminal. Then I'm going to type in what interface I want to access. So let's go into interface gigamit zero slash zero. I'm going to go back to my network diagram real quick, which is where you live when you're assigning IP addresses. This router, AZRT01, which is what we're looking at right now, has the gigabit 0 slash 0 assigned to the internet connection. So where would I get that IP address information? Well, I would get it from the internet service provider. So if I was using, uh, here in Arizona, we have uh, CenturyLink, we have uh, Cox Communication, whatever, whatever carrier I was using, I would contact them, they would provide me the public IP address information and I would assign it to that router. Now, in this case, we don't have that information. This is just kind of setting up a base configuration. So oftentimes we might put a, a, a placeholder IP address, we might put what we think it's going to be, or we might just leave it off until we get to that configuration. Nonetheless, to demonstrate this, I'm going to assign that interface, the IP address, 192.168.10.1. So I'm coming back here again. We're in the interface configuration mode for gigabit 0 slash 0, which again traces to this physical interface, this red cable, which goes to our service writer over here. That's this guy. So the first command will assign the IP address. We'll do IP space address, and let's use the context sensitive help. Question mark. 192.168. 
10.1, that was the IP address that we came up with just a moment ago. You notice you can also say, I just want to get the IP address from a DHCP server. A lot of internet service routers will do that for you, and that's where they will automatically assign you the IP address, and your router will just take whatever it's given. Usually consumer grade connections will use dynamic IP addresses using DHCP, whereas business grade connections will have a static IP address because you want that stability. I'm assigning this statically to the router right now. I'll do a space question mark. And you can see here's the subnet mask. Now, this would also be given to us by the service router, but the most common subnet mask in the world is known as a class C mask, 255.255.255.0. A ton more about subnetting uh, in a later a, a later skill. So I'm going to hit the enter key, and there's no feedback. There's no yes, I accepted that. The only it's <laughs> I, I was talking to my wife once, um, and it, it, she she loves when I I rub her feet. So she's laying on the couch rubbing her feet, and and I go, is this is this doing anything? She's like, yes, just keep rubbing my feet. I'm like, you know, a little like. Yeah, that's great. You know, keep doing that. Mm, that's nice. She goes, tell you what, if I don't say anything, I like it. If I complain, then I don't. So now I can tell her, you're just like a Cisco router. She'll love that one. Now I'm going to type in end for a moment just to drop back to privilege mode and type in the command show IP interface brief. Hit the enter key and I see that that IP address is assigned, but it's not working. It's shut down. So how do we turn it on? Well, actually, let me do this. I'm going to do a show run on the router, which shows the configuration. I'll space down right here to the interface gigabit 0 slash 0. Now, I see IP address that I've assigned right there. Look at this, the shutdown command. This is something unique to, to routers, is they will have all of their interfaces shut down by default out of the box. It's our job as the administrator to go in and turn them on. Now. We've already known how to negate commands. I did that when I was removing the host name in one of the earlier videos, but what about the shutdown command? Well, it's the same thing. Watch this. Configure terminal, interface gigabit ethernet, oh, GI gigabit ethernet zero slash zero, and I'm gonna type in the command no shutdown. That's one of the weirdest commands in all Cisco because it's kind of a double negative, so I'm unshutting it, if you will. Notice the status messages start pouring in. It says gigabit ethernet changed to down because it hasn't done anything yet. It just removed the no shut, it removed the shutdown state. It's no longer administratively down. Then it's another status message coming in here saying the gigabit ethernet is now changed to up. Hey, look at this line protocol changed to up. Why did, why did it say it twice? Well, remember, I'm gonna hit control Z back out, do a show IP interface brief. It's measuring the physical connection layer one, that's the status. That's this message right here. Then it's measuring the data link connection. That's the protocol. Notice it says line protocol is now changed to up. Now you might look at this and go, what is that? Well, those are known as syslog messages. These are well-known RFC standard, like a standards body said, this is what the message will look like. So this is just letting us know this interface has now been activated. If I look at it, and I see right here, whoa, I'm knocking stuff over here. If I look at it, I can now see, I don't know if you can see that, um, lights underneath it. Hang on, let's, let's get close and personal. Uh, right there, you see the blinking lights that are in there? Uh, hang on, I'm, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go in, config T, interface GI, zero slash zero, and I'm gonna type in shutdown. Okay, hang on, and I'm gonna put it right here and press the enter key, ready? Bam, see those lights go right away, cuts off the connectivity. I'll hit the up arrow, by the way, it's showing, uh, you know, change state to down. Hit the up arrow, hit control A, move my cursor back to the beginning of the line, do no shutdown, and, and, where are they at? Where are they at? Where are you at? There we go, the, the lights are now coming on, that's the status right there, and then over here we start blinking right there. The activity that's traffic is now going into that interface. It's working. Now keep in mind, you will be doing this process again and again and again as you configure Cisco devices. It's regular, it's routine to go in and assign IP addresses, change IP addresses, enable the interfaces, disable the interfaces when you need to. Right now we're talking about just the ability and we're gonna put it together as a skill at the very end of this for now. We have implemented the commands needed to assign an IP address to a Cisco router and enable the interface. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.